In this video, we're going to talk about lab seven, which is about incidents. So in the lab sheet, there is a definition of incidents and it covers some of the background that we have covered in the lecture and again, worth reading. So we're talking about handling of incidents, uh, going through the phases of preparation, detection, analysis, containment, eradication and recovery, and then post-incident activity. So the actual lab itself, we're going to use a tool called Yarrow, which is essentially something that will re read uh, files of any sort and will look for strings. And we give the strings that we want to match and it's used potentially to do static analysis on malware. And before we start matching malware, let's try and write a rule that will match the text hello world. So we're going to start the container, uh, which is incident, and it asks us to go to the directory opt malware test, and if we do an ls there we've got a uh, directory called files, if we do files we have two files in it, by and hello. If we have a look at those files It just has bye bye in it. And hello text has hello world. So in the instructions, we're going to actually uh, create a rule that Yarrow is going to use, which is going to look for files that have a string, which is hello world. And uh, it basically, if that's true, then it will report that as a positive find. So let's just copy that. And it asks us, just make sure we're in the right directory, to use v. And we're going to create a file called hello world.yar, which is the extension that Yara expects. So put that into edit mode by clicking, hitting I for insert. And in fact, if you would rather do it, let's just press escape and press uh, colon set paste. Set paste sets the mode so that sometimes when you paste code, especially, it formats it up correctly. Hit enter, and then we can paste that in. And I didn't manage to copy that properly. So let's delete that, insert, and then put rule, hello world. There we go. So that is, um, a raw for Yarrow which has the strings that it's going to match and it will set a variable dot hello with the result of that match and then it has a condition um, to say if this is true then report it back so we can now hit escape and then WQ for write and quit and if you do an LS we now have that filed file hello world dot yar we can then run that by doing Yara, and then the file, hello world.yar, and then we're going to search the files directory. So we have to say where that file is, so we give it the explicit path, which is current directory, forward slash, and then files. So we'll search through that um, directory, looking at all the files, and see if it can match text uh, that we've given it in the rule. And lo and behold, it does. It says, hello world rule, matches on this file dot files hello dot text so that works okay let's try it on a real malware sample so the lab sheet asks us to go into opt malware malware sample one and if we do an ls there we can see that we have two things a rule dot yar and a malware dot one Let's have a look at the rule.yar. This is actually quite a big um, rule section or rule uh, file. And you can see that it has a number of rules. Um, and for example, this one, which is uh, got some metadata that's the basically saying who wrote it so it's copyright Kaspersky lab and it says 
rule to detect equation groups exploitation library. It should give you some hints about this. Uh, and then there's a whole series of strings. And what these are are a whole series of strings here. And then there's a condition. And essentially, uh, it's basically looking for uh, um, a match of mz at position 0 and then any of the other strings that here. So it can match as long as it matches this one and any of these, then it will it will come up with a exploit lib that matches on that rule. And then there's another rule. Um, again, you can see that it's not just strings, it's looking for bytes as well that it's trying to match um, and it goes on so forth, so on and so forth. A whole series of them, it gets very long. And they would have built this up by having a look at uh, collecting uh, thousands of malware samples and running rules on them and uh, reverse engineering. Right, so we're going to run this uh, rules file against malware1. If we do a file, malware1, it says it's a PE32 executable uh, Intel um, for MS Windows. So it's a 32-bit Windows application and uh, so that's um, already interesting but let's just run Yara so you write Yara um, and just to remind myself of the, the syntax Yara rule.yar malware.1 okay so it's matched actually three rules and it basically says it's part of the equation um, exploit lib um, it's also matched on a, a rule double fantasy and another rule double fantasy as well so essentially we can look at the information that's provided in this research report report and we can look at um, the equation group and what uh, other information has um, been provided here. Um, but that's essentially um, what we do for uh, running the rule there. So the question asks us to find the MD5 hash of that and we can do that using an application called MD5sum and If we do a help on the MD5 sum, it will actually just say uh, MD5 so print or check MD5 checksum with no file or when file is that read standard input, and we just pass it the file name. So we can do MD5 sum and then malware one and get the hash back of that, and that's relatively straightforward. And then you can use that as the flag. All right, let's go back and Go to malware sample two and let's do an ls and we've again got a uh, rule set and malware two. Let's run that rule.yar malware two and let's come back with Stuxnet and Again, it says find the MD5 hash of malware2 and then enter that in. Um, so I talk about Stuxnet, I've talked about it in the lectures a number of times, and you can have a look at um, the actual way that this runs. So this is actually the real malware, um, which is why it's a good idea not to copy this out or do anything with it. Um, although it does have some restrictions on where it will run, it can still potentially do some damage. So Now we're going to go on to another type of incident management type of analysis where we're looking at a network log. And this is, at, is in the directory malware, malware underbar con. So let's have a look at that directory and do an ls there and we have a malware log 
if we cat malware log, and we can just pipe that to a, a, a program called more, or you can actually do less as well. And we can see, let's just expand that out a bit. Um, okay, so it's a long file with uh, a series of uh, data entries. What we're really interested in is the uh, IP addresses that uh, appear in this along with ports. So there will be a source and destination and it will tell you what type of traffic it's going to. So this is the source port, the port that that was using, going to a destination um, plus uh, a uh, port, which is where HTTP is running. So examine the log and find any IP addresses that look suspicious and check if indeed it's an indicator of compromise. So an indicator of compromise is a things like an IP address or hash um, values of files that have been associated with uh, either uh, threat actors uh, taking threat actions um, through hacking or even using malware. What we're going to do is try and identify an APT group and we're going to enter the APT group a name associated with the IP address. So we're going to use this uh, command here which is a series of commands that uh, we'll, I'll explain as we go along. So let's just put that, paste that command in. So what this is doing, let's just break it down. Uh, so the first command is cat. We know what cat does. It just uh, shows you the, the contents of the file. If we go back up, put the rest of it, the next command, so this character here is the pipe command. And that command basically takes the output of the command on the left and passes it to the command on the right. Orc is a text processing and pattern matching um, tool. And what we're saying here is that we're going to use a field, minus F is a field separator, and we're going to use a space. So you can see that each of these different uh, fields in this file are separated by spaces. You can put other characters in there. Sometimes, for example, there might be a, a colon or a semicolon that you want to split it on. And it will split each of the lines of text um, based on that character. And then we issue a command for it to print. And yeah, we um, the command in awk has braces around it. And we say print. And then it for each of these things that it retrieves, it will assign a number to it starting for $1, $2, $3. And so it will say, print the third field, which is this one. Put a space in, print the fifth field, which is this one. And then the sixth field, which is the port. And then we pipe all of that to another command, which will sort um, the uh, output in ascending order. So um, let's uh, do that. And this is what we get. Oh, sorry, the minus U of the sort is unique. So it, it will take out duplicates. If we run that and we take off the sort, you'll get that and you don't want that. So let's keep that and it, it gives us unique things. Uh, we can discount the first two addresses because they're going to an, an internal IP address and we're not really in interested in that. What we're interested in is these ones which are originating from an internal IP address because 192.168 is a private IP, but they're going to external addresses on these ports. And it's these two IP addresses that are interesting because um, of the fact that they are basically uh, going externally to something that we don't recognize. So um, because of that, what we can do is we can now do a Google search 
or a search and we can just put the IP and address and just put in APT because we go back to the lab and it asks us to enter the APT group name associated with the IP address. Um, Googling is a skill or Google dorking it's called in when it's done in cybersecurity uh, but uh, basically it's a quite a, a good skill to uh, learn because it's not absolutely apparent how to Google things to get the results that you want and to sift through and most people normally will Google something look at the first set page of results and then give up when they don't find it but you can increase your chances of finding things by giving it some clues about what you're looking for we're looking for the name of an APT an advanced persistent threat so we give it the IP address and the APT um, we could put in other things like IOC, um, uh, you know, threat actors, uh, all sorts of other things that might restrict the choice. Let's do that. And what we get is essentially um, the first hit is um, something which is from SecureList, which is the Kaspersky uh, blog. And it's called Equation, the Death Star of Malware Galaxy. Um, and then there's a whole series of other ones, uh, including equation APT IOC. And what you would do is just go in and look at those um, reports and read through them to get what you're looking for. It's worth reading these reports anyway, just because of the interesting um, facts that they, they sort of determine. Kaspersky is a Russian... Uh, antivirus software provider, um, slightly more, less in, um, more impartial, I should say, than uh, some of the others. Um, so I would actually hold anything they said with a certain degree of credibility. Uh, this other group here, Red Drip Seven, a Chinese uh, analyst group. Again, um, you know, sort of worth looking at those, and there are other groups as well. So basically, that's how it is, and. Again, enter the APT group name associated with these IP addresses. Make sure that the IP addresses appear in this, in these blogs, because it may have um, come up for some other reason. And that's that lab done. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. And we'll be doing lab eight next.